when you're in that last mile and you're like, I want to quit more than anything, and your brain's telling you that, you want to be able to say, you know what, I see my buddy over there and I see people who are pushing me, I can lean on that social support. You have whole networks in your brain that do nothing but process other people's information. I'm looking at your face right now, I see you're nodding. I'm sorry. I see that. <laughs> <laughs>
Great. You are rewiring your brain and you're just using your fortitude and your toughness you to do it. You are rewiring. Absolutely. If oh, okay, you okay. change, your brain's changing. So you're, you are taking advantage of your brain's ability to change. Unfortunately, a lot of people aren't, they don't have that. They find themselves going back and back to the same types of addictions or okay. problems, whether they're clinical or subclinical, just things you don't want in your life. We only have so much willpower throughout the day. Many studies have shown that, sure, you can do that, but by the end of the day, we're often so worn out that we, we get stuck on social media late at night looking through articles we don't really care about. You, you sort of get worn down, and there's only so many things you can affect during the day. So the idea is do whatever it takes to be able to, to change your habits for the better. And if you can do it with your own internal behavior, great. If you need neurofeedback, great. If you need a more interventional therapy, great. We're trying to recognize which ones are most effective in changing brain patterns, which ones are hitting the right systems at the right times, because you are a very complicated combination of a lot of things that are going on. You have you have interests about, you know, what am I, what do my friends think is important? And then you have your own internal motivations, and then you have monetary motivations, and then you have your emotional system that says, well, I know that's the right thing to do, but it doesn't really feel like I want to do that. So you're fighting yourself yeah. and, and the right system doesn't always win to change who you are. So we got to look for all the toolkits that we can. So in the future, would someone who knows he or she should eat better, but doesn't have the will or grit to do it, could there be a treatment that could rewire their brain in the next day or maybe And in a gradual time period? Yeah, here, this might be an example, which is that, you know, sometimes we just get, we get stuck in certain situations, and if we recognize that our biology has some amount of control over what we're doing, that we're stuck in certain situations, we might be able to get out of them. And, he, and here's an example, let's say, Um, you have an addiction to Instagram or you have an addiction to something else that's going on you want to change that and every time you still find you don't find your willpower is enough you find yourself still on Instagram I found this myself um, we need to recognize that our, our we are our attention circuits are being hijacked right now by everybody else everybody wants you to download their app click on their thing look at their advertisements you might consider Turning off notifications on your phone is one example of just like, okay, well, I'm not even going to, I don't even want my willpower to be tested. I'm going to delete the app or I'm going to turn off notifications so that I only have to deal with it a few times a day and I don't get worn down. So simple steps. Simple steps, but At that first. allows you, that allows your brain to rewire itself. You're stuck in this behavioral rut where you do the same, because your brain wants to do the same thing over and over again in a lot of circumstances. It's easy. You don't even think about it. Just like you can drive home without even thinking about it. Yeah, it takes no effort. Your brain doesn't want to burn the energy to learn new things. So you got to make it easy for yourself to rewire. So the idea would be just to remove the impediment so that you can, you know, for a week or two weeks or a month, retrain those new habits to not check your phone every five seconds. And then you can turn notifications back on or reinstall the app and you're going to be in a much better situation. So allow yourself to rewire maximally, even if you want to just do it of your own, you know, free will. So let's move on to uh, maybe an observation you did with the professional snowboarder you wanted to, to see how uh, his brain worked during yeah. the performance that's right. and that's super relevant for the people watching who are uh, intensely involved in OCR yeah. so how would you maybe parallel the two in terms of what you found out yeah. during uh, uh, this snowboarders performance and what could be maybe uh, related to uh, to OCR yeah you know I think I think it's highly related one of the tips that I've been getting lately is just you have you know there's only so much stress that our body can take and you have to find what's your mental replenishment routine. For some people, it's going outdoors and hiking. Um, for me, it's playing tennis. And how I actually got involved with the X Games was through Harley Davidson we did. We partnered together on a project because for a long time, motorcyclists have reported that You know, just a way they get their mental health right is by riding a motorcycle. That's what gets them feeling good at the end of the day. A lot of first responders do that to sort of clear their mind and make sure things are, are in the direction they want it to go and they don't get stuck in a really bad cycle. And so we partnered with Harley and we found some really interesting results that while riding, people showed a, a, a huge change in focus. A lot of it was just being able to kind of take your mind, just occupy your brain enough that you're not focused on all the things that have happened to you during the day and you get that replenishment. And uh, as a core Larry, there were a lot of X Games athletes that also rode motorcycles with Harley, and so we scanned um, we scanned Scotty James, who he won uh, X Games gold this last uh, this last X Games in the winter, and uh, Lizzie Armanto, and she's an incredible skateboarder, and so. 
We scanned their brains while they were um, doing their sports and while they were riding their Harleys. And it was interesting, we found very similar results that if you look at the neural activation that's happening when distraction's going on, they're, in both cases, they were able to tune out the distraction to kind of an unprecedented level that we had seen in most people and find that clarity. And, and that really ties in with my belief that the difference between gold and silver it's not muscles, it's mm -hmm. your brain. It's in that moment, being able to tune out the fans, tune yeah, out what happened to you over the last day and week, and those negative thoughts that sometimes stack up in our brains in this modern world, and focus on what there is to do. So today, this weekend, we're at the uh, Spartan World Championship, obviously. So if I'm running elite, if I'm running for my country, I'm vying for first place, I'm maybe running open. So what would be the three key things I should do to uh, parallel the performance that your snowboarder uh, was able to do by focusing or maybe uh, alleviate the stress? Yeah, three it's things. A, yeah, it's a really good question. I, I don't know if I have three exact tips to give them because we haven't studied <laughs> that exact. A lot of it, let me just put it this way, a lot of it tends to be beforehand, which is putting in the routines where you're able to tune out all the demands on your time and focus on your sport uh, to get your mental, you know, to get your brain in the right state where when it's game time, you don't need to think about it. I guess one tip would be don't think about it. You actually don't want your conscious brain involved in these highly technical activities when you're doing the rope climbing and you're in the zone. You want, you've, you've basically been practicing for so long, you want autopilot. The same reason that um, in basketball when people are going to shoot free throws, they have the same routine. Bounce, bounce, and they shoot because they've done that so many times they don't even think about it anymore. It's when you think about it that you mess up. When I ask you, oh, how did you do that? Then you are like, oh, well, ha, 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 and then you don't, you don't think it. So uh, one interesting, you know, sort of counterintuitive thing would be don't think. don't think. Do what you've been trained to do. Rely on what your brain has been practicing for a long time. It's good at instilling those habits and practicing them. So second would be what? Tough question, huh? Yeah, no, tough just because, you know, I'm really, <laughs> as a scientist, you want to stick with like, okay, I've studied this and this and this. So I haven't studied athletes in real time, but um, maybe some of it would be lean on your community. We find that... That's good. It's a huge one. A lot of successful interventional programs, it, it involves getting in a community. And I think that's what's strong here just in the few hours I've been here at the Spartan uh, World Championship is that it's really tight. People are here to support yep. each other. They're not trying to rip each other down. They know they're all here to push forward. And so when you're in that last mile and you're like, I want to quit more than anything, and your brain's telling you that, you want to be able to say, you know what? I see my buddy over there, and I see people who are pushing me. I can lean on that social support. You have whole networks in your brain that do nothing but process other people's information. I'm looking at your face right now. I see you're nodding. I'm sorry. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm getting that. I'm getting that feedback. You get that. You got your great laugh. You know all that's like okay. I guess the podcast is going well. Yeah, absolutely. So and that keeps me going, even though I'm kind of stumped on the question. So right. So I'm getting its exact You're going example. Absolutely wonderfully. Perfectly. And then you know, th <laughs> third tip might be that um, this is sort of a crazy one, but uh, you have, you ever find that when you jump in a pool and you hold your breath, your brain starts telling you after a little while, oh, you're you're running out of oxygen. You got to come yeah. up for air. It's actually this primitive area in your brainstem called the pre-Botzinger complex, and, it, and, and it's trying to force you to breathe. But what's, you know, I'm not trying to give dangerous advice here, but it's very interesting that you don't really need oxygen that bad at that moment. It's sort of this early warning system that's trying to get, it's compelling you to stop when you don't necessarily have to already. So I think another thing here that these guys have mastered, but for everybody else out there, when your brain tells you to stop, it might just be the early warning system. It might not be that you actually are out of gas. So don't take that as necessarily a black and white signal. Keep pushing through it because, and I think this is back to the neuroplasticity point of training. Like if you can build up the other networks to not listen to those warning signs and push through, whether it's late night and you got to get something done for tomorrow, whether it's a tough relationship that you're in and you're like, I'm done with this. And, but you know, in the long term it would be good if you stay together or if it's a tough physical challenge, don't necessarily listen to your primitive reptilian brain that's evolved for millions of years to keep you alive. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily apply anymore there you go that's the modern world is not how we evolved and it's kind of amazing that we're able to function with all these people around and no one's yeah, attacking yeah. each other and no, you know, no one's you. fighting for resources 
Well, I get your passion and your, uh, you, see, you can see it through your eyes that you're super passionate about that and you're fascinated still about all of this that's going on. And we got everything in the interview and you were able to do everything with your hands. So you were Ricky, <laughs> you Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Didn't podcast. know where they were. Okay, good. They were here and there and oh, there. That awesome. was super good, perfect. Good. Yeah. Subconscious <laughs> routines. I don't know where there they went, go. honestly. That was, with, that was with Dillian or what? Yeah, totally. Like right now, I mean, why, why is your feet, why are they the way that they are? Why did, they, did you pick that or did your subconscious brain pick that? There you go. That's a mystery. Probably 95% of what we do is unconscious routines. So back to the main point is like get the right environment to burn in those routines that you want because that's most of who you are. I thoroughly enjoyed my conversation with Dr. Don Vaughn and I really hope you uh, did too. So let's review what we've learned today from uh, the good doctor, shall we? Number one, don't think about it. So when it's time to perform, it is time to perform. It's not time to think or plan out things. Train, train, train and repeat. In order for a movement to become a reflex, you have to accumulate 10,000 repetitions. That's something I used to teach through my karate school. Second. Lean on your community, so surround yourself with people who are going to push you forward and help you out when the time is right and not drag you down with them. And third one, to my opinion, the most important one, manage your warning system. Your body can go much farther and much harder than you think it can and the harder your challenge, the louder that little voice in your head will tell you to stop and to quit. So train your mind, train your body not to listen to that voice and you'll surprise yourself uh, about how much you can accomplish. If you've liked what you've uh, seen or heard today, please subscribe, like, hit the bell, comment, uh, share to a friend if you think that the information you've learned today will uh, help him or her out. But what I'd like to know now is what you have learned through this interview. So uh, please leave it in the comments or just reach me on my social at Sensei Says Pod, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you want to receive my interviews fast and first, don't forget to sign up to the newsletter and I will see you next week. Saitos, you are dismissed. And I couldn't think of a better way to spend New Year's Eve in Las <laughs> Vegas than being face down in a puddle of mud doing push-ups with 15 total strangers. So I did that. <laughs> About uh, 14,200 feet and there was this lenticular cloud that was right on the top of the mountain and it just wouldn't go away. It was minus 80 up there.